BYD have just revealed their new Blade batteries. This is the second generation Blade battery, and it's 27% more energy dense than BYD's existing Blade batteries. This is huge. I mean, BYD is already getting good range. Tesla is already getting good range using BYD Blade batteries. But improving the energy density by 27% is going to give cars, BYD cars, cars powered by BYD batteries, which are now numbering in the millions, significantly more range. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you can support us on Patreon, that would be amazing. I'll put a link in the description below. BYD have just revealed their new Blade batteries. What is the actual biggest difference between the old version and the new version? Well, the new version has an increased energy density of exactly 26.6666666%. You get the point, so 27% rounded up. The existing Blade battery has an energy density of 150 watts per kilogram, which is pretty low actually compared to CATL's new Shenzhen LFP batteries. So the Shenzhen is basically uh, CATL's version two as well of their lithium ion phosphate blade. It's not really version two, it's more like version seven actually, but let's just say for what you know, for what the average person knows, it's version two. Comparing them though, the big difference is CATL's Shenzhen battery actually charges much faster than BYD's Blade batteries. But Blade, the Blade battery has a pretty good, a pretty good energy density now. 190 watts per kilogram for lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are extremely reliable, can be charged to 100% without any real battery degradation issues. These numbers are actually pretty damn incredible. BYD's chairman or the CEO of the company, Wang Shanfu, revealed this development of these new batteries during a financial report communication meeting within the last 24 hours. Wang Shanfu said that the second generation blade battery will have a smaller size um, versus existing batteries, and they're already really small, and a lighter weight for the same endurance, and that power consumption will be reduced per 100 kilometers. In other words, these batteries will be more efficient. Keep in mind as well, BYD have been working on these batteries for at least at least three years, because BYD completed development of the original battery just over more than three years ago. Fast technology speculate that the second generation blade battery will enable EVs to have 1,000 kilometers of CLTC range, which would mean probably around 850 kilometers of WLTP range, uh, approximately probably 800 kilometers on the EPA cycle. Such a range per car news China would make cars fitted with them very competitive with semi-solid state batteries being used in Neo's vehicle. And to be honest, those, that, that battery pack in Neo's car, you can't actually even buy that because it's so expensive. It's ridiculously expensive. It's, it's at least twice the price of the BYD Blade battery. I believe it's actually even more than twice the price. Now, if you're wondering how much are these batteries, what do they cost? Well, another CEO of a car company in China said they are paying 55 to $60 um, per kilowatt hour, which if that's true, and everyone believes it is, Tony Sieber has quoted that figure, then that would mean these batteries make it cheaper to build an electric car versus internal combustion. Of course, increasing the energy density by 27% is gonna make it even cheaper because this opens up the possibility to put a smaller battery pack in to get a similar range. So for example, right now, you've got the BYD 803. It has a 60, a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's gonna give you around 450 kilometers of range. So you know, just under 300 miles. But now it will only need a battery pack of maybe 10% smaller, probably about a 50 kilowatt hour size battery in order to get that same range. So now it's gonna be cheaper for BYD to manufacture the newer version of the 803 or the newer version of the SEAL when these new batteries are being used en masse. And BYD are pretty quick to getting things up and you know, production running, but BYD will continue to make the older version of these batteries as well. If the second generation battery can achieve more than 190 watts per kilo in energy density, it would make it the highest energy density LFP battery to date which is being mass produced. Now there are much, much higher energy density LFP batteries that are made in limited quantities by the manufacturers. Um, some companies are making them at 235 watts per kilo. 
Uh, that's Goshon High Tech. They have an LFP battery that they uh, apparently produce in relatively small numbers. But yeah, mass production, it would become, if, it, if say, for example, the energy density was 200 watts per kilo, if they were to push that number a little bit, that would be the highest energy density mass produced. BYD claimed that one of the key benefits of the Blade battery is they're really safe and they're unlikely to catch on fire. Now, detractors of BYD uh, have shown videos of BYD cars exploding, literally basically blowing up and, and on fire. There are quite a few videos of that happening. That's true. We can't deny that. But we can also point out that almost all those vehicles were plug-in hybrids. Uh, BYD's EVs have excellent quality excellent uh, excellent reviews in China. The plug-in hybrids, they're the ones who have had these uh, issues. Um, it's a it's kind of a complicated issue, but it seems like BYD may have solved the reason why those fires were happening. But anyhow, BYD are very keen to show the nail penetration test. So they show that if you put a nail into a battery pack, a normal battery pack, so say a nickel cobalt manganese battery pack or a nickel cobalt aluminum battery pack, usually if you penetrate it with a nail, it will um, end up catching fire. It, it'll be quite a, a bad scenario. But if you penetrate a blade battery with a nail, nothing happens. If you drive over a blade battery with a truck, nothing happens. It's true. The only thing is how relevant is that in the real world? I mean, does people come along stabbing your battery pack with a nail? No, but the point is of course to say that they're much safer. And it's true. I've seen lots of BYDs that have been crashed, heaps of them. And many, many, many BYDs have been crashed in quite bad crashes where people say the battery's fine and the car never set itself on fire. Very, very common. So in addition to this increase in energy density, BYD's new blade battery will apparently be smaller per actual uh, cell size. Uh, it will be lighter and it will enable faster charging speeds. Now, BYD's charging speeds for their cars right now are not that great. The way BYD are able to get around this challenge is in their newer cars, they split the battery pack into two components and you can charge each battery pack individually in the same car. So the new Denza N7 has this ability. Uh, you can charge each battery pack at around 170 kilowatt charging speeds, meaning the entire battery charges at over 300, about 350, 360 kilowatt charging speeds. I think it's 350. But the truth is the Blade battery, it, its charging speeds are well behind some of the competition. For example, I just pointed out CATL's lithium ion phosphate battery, the Shenzhen battery, that can charge at speeds of up to 550 kilowatt. And that's not theoretical, that's been proven a few times in the real world in cars that are actually available today. So this is one other area that BYD are looking at, improving the fast charging performance. Will this result in cheaper EVs? Will, will cars now be cheaper? Absolutely. I mean, BYD are reducing their prices to the point where they're selling with almost no margin in order to, to take over the market, to become the next Toyota. BYD want to get, you know, they want to be number one. And I think it's working. Look at their sales in March. 300,000 vehicle sold, vehicles sold in March, which is one of the worst months in China for the year, historically. That number is incredible. They're eating the lunch of legacy automakers. They're, I mean, who, who suffered in March in China? Toyota did. Pre predominantly Japanese automakers, GM sales went down as well. So BYD will continue to be aggressive. And this is going to enable them to price their cars cheaper, get the same range, or to provide options, say pickup trucks with a thousand kilometers of range. This is the future. This is version two. Imagine how good version three is going to be. How good version four is going to be. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.